This is a quick video on the scapula. If you notice that you're probably looking at this and you're like, oh yeah, I noticed this is a scapula, but how do you tell a left scapula from a right scapula? Well, this is actually a left scapula, if you couldn't already guess. And the way that I remember it is that this detail here is the spout of a teapot, and this detail here is the handle. And you've heard that little rhyme, and I'm not going to do that little rhyme because I know you think it's corny, but here's the handle, and I can pour tea just like that. So this is the spout of the scapula. This is the handle that I use to pour out tea. And that way it tells me, okay, the handle or the spine is on the of the scapula or the back. And the spout, which is known as the glenoid fossa, some people call it the glenoid cavity, that area here is actually on the lateral uh, side of it. So basically what I'm saying is this little spout, the glenoid cavity, that's where your arm attaches. This is the socket in the ball and socket joint. And this is the spine where you have the supraspinatus fossa here at the top and you have the infraspinatus fossa underneath and you're able to grab the spine and tilt it as such. Now for those of you who are taking kinesiology you have to learn about the rotation of the scapula, you have to talk about lateral rotation and medial rotation and all that crazy stuff, but we're not going to do that in this video. We're just pointing out simple details about the scapula. So that's the spine. This is going to be my uh, glenoid fossa or glenoid cavity. Also, if you flip this over, here's the coronoid process. Coronoid process doesn't really stand out to people until they find out that the, uh, uh, not the coronoid, I'm sorry, the coracoid process. The coracoid process is where your coracobrachialis muscle attaches. And it actually works a lot like the bicep brachii, which allows you to flex your arm. Also, this little fossa here is the subscapularis fossa. Sub, underneath, scapularis, scapula. You actually have a muscle here, which is one of the four muscles that join together with their tendons and form your, um, your um, sats, or, or what's known as the four tendons that fuse here and become the rotator cuff. So you have that fossa that's located here, and if I flip this around, this is going to be my medial border, and that's going to be my lateral border which makes this my inferior angle and this makes my superior angle. Now, once again, if you don't know how to tell a left from a right, it's easy. This thing right here, the spine is on the back. The front is flat. The flat front is on your back. So that's lying against your back. This is that hard line that you can feel when you poke somebody in their upper back. This is where your arm attaches. If this were a right, if I was saying, oh, dude, this is a right scapula, and I put this on my back, then that would actually have an arm sticking out in the middle of my back. I'd be looking like some dude off of Men in Black 4 or something like that. Yeah, I know, you're probably saying Men in Black 4. Wait a minute, is that a real movie? Hey, I'm just starting a rumor. Anyway, so this is your scapula. Um, one last detail that people oftentimes have to learn is the acromion which is this flat structure here. That flat structure actually, here's a trick. That structure is articulating with your clavicle, which we'll put right here. So the acromial end of your clavicle actually articulates with the acromion on the scapula. You can find that by finding that little dip at the base of your neck right there by the area that we typically call the throat and take your walk it around that bone all the way to your shoulder and you'll feel where this and this actually connect. That's all we got time for now. We'll talk to you soon.